One of the doctors who helped give Brenda her voice back, Dr. Peter Belofsky, is here from the University of California at Davis, head and neck surgeon and laryngeal specialist, right? Thank you for having me. Welcome, welcome. You know, head and neck surgeon, I can't even begin to, to comprehend the complexity, the difficulty of doing this surgery. And, and having done it, I want to know what went through your mind the first time you heard Brenda speak? Well, I was speechless. <laughs> I, I bet you were. <laughs> um, but really, it was one of the most uh, special moments I ever went through. I mean, she was really, literally, willing to risk life and limb so her voice could be heard. And uh, she's one of the most courageous women I've ever met. Really is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just, 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 just really quickly, just so everyone understands, you still have your tracheotomy. Yep. Hopefully I'll be able to get it out in time. I'm still exercising, doing a lot of work, so that the nerves and the veins can all grow together. And I hope in time it will come out. And can you explain how long she can expect to have that and why she still has it in? She's an optimist, and I'm, I'm a realist. <laughs> uh, the only other previous laryngeal transplant still has his tracheotomy in. And we did a couple of... Uh, intricate procedures with this operation so that hopefully she will regain the ability to open her vocal folds and give her adequate air for us to remove the tracheotomy tube. And you know, explain to everyone, Dr. Ward, yeah, not think, only the procedure, but, but why she has the tracheotomy, et cetera. Exactly, and this all started with a traumatic injury to her, her trachea, where the trachea is that windpipe, it's that the, that pipe that we have in the neck that bifurcates into two bronchi, the airways going into the neck. And inside that, you see the thyroid gland. Here, you see your Adam's apple cartilage that protects your trachea and protects, protects your voice box, which is inside, as you can see, those vocal cords right there. This is what was injured in Brenda's case. And that tube coming out caused injury, a disruption, probably a fracture of the cartilage in her voice box, which healed with scar tissue. So she would never be able to, to breathe without a, a tracheotomy, let alone ever speak again, without getting a whole new trachea and voice box. And, and, and this is what you transplanted in her case, this whole complex of the trachea, the thyroid gland, and the larynx or voice box. And just so everyone understands this, the larynx not only controls your voice, but it controls the air coming into your trachea. And the reason why you have to hold the, the trache, tracheotomy when you talk is if you didn't, air would just escape out of the hole here and not come through your vocal cords. And so that's why whenever she talks, she holds that. And you'll see that quite often. And I, I, I know a lot of people always wonder, people who have tracheotomies, which is not uncommon, why they always hold it. It's so the air will come out through the larynx, which are the vocal cords, and they can make noise.